Good day and welcome to Career Therapy with Seneca Williams where we discuss women, work, and wellness. I'm a therapist and career coach and I believe that every woman has the ability to achieve her dreams of a successful life and career. All she needs is the right support network and success skills. Today I'm so privileged and happy and honored to have our guest, Chandel DeRig. Chandel is a social media guru, mompreneur, and the list goes on and on and on. I'm so happy to have her here to talk about all the things that she does. She works in media, and she has been awarded as well by the Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, where she was recognized for her hosting a TV show called Uncensored Rhyme and Reason. Chandel also is a manager for a group that is called Rhythm Cast Music. She's a co-host and a social media consultant to Julian's Promos, which is the number one in soca music distribution in the world. Um, she's doing so much stuff, I'm going to tell her to share some of her you know, accolades because it's just so much that I, I have here that I can't even get into it. So, Shandell, welcome to the show. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Can you tell um, everyone a little bit about yourself? Wow, that's, you know, when I hear it, it's just like, wow, I really have done a lot, and I still feel unsatisfied. I'm one of those people that I, I have to keep going until I get to the end. Um, <laughs> I, as you mentioned, I've done media. I am in media. I work for Julian's Promos. I came across Julian's Promos. I used to be um, a blogger on this site called uh, Island, islandmix.com. And from there, Julian's promos used to promote videos and uh, artist interviews. As a result, I wrote to him. I said, you know, that's my passion. I would like to be involved in it. How can I get involved? So he says, sure, come down. Here um, is the next interview I have up, and I would love to have you there. So it was just simple networking, and from there it just took off. I've been with Julian's promos since about uh, 2012 and till present. I've changed roles. I'm more behind the camera. I'm more behind the scenes doing um, consultancy for artists. Uh, I still write blogs. I still write uh, artist write-ups. So if an artist needs an article done about them, I'm, I'm willing and able and committed to help them out just to get them out there. Wow, amazing. And you're also a manager as well. Yes, I manage uh, a group, um, which is Rhythm Cast Music. We started out as DJs. It's a group of DJs. From there, um, we do music production now. So I, if, for those of you who listen to soca music, you might know The Road Makes Brave. That was produced by our team. So we're looking to get our feet wet into more activities, but we still DJ. We still help out within our community. However, the dynamics have changed slightly. That's just about it. But I'm still managing them. And also I have to add that I'm also adding to my plate, um, um, there's a soca artist by the name of Naftali that I'm also managing and a producer in St. Vincent by the name of Carbon Jams that I'm also managing as well. So who knows, maybe I might just open a management entertainment group sometime soon. You just never know. You just got to okay. keep it locked. Wow. And what our audience doesn't know is, you also um, are you, you wear many hats. They don't know that you wear many hats. So you have all of this going on with uh, the social media, with the entertainment, music, management. They also don't know that you're, you know, um, a scholar. You have an MPA, so that's something there. And then also, you're also a chef, <laughs> and you, you know, you make pepper sauces and all this stuff. So. You know, this introduction is great because our topic today is juggling your passion and your priorities, multifaceted career building, because sometimes women don't know or believe that they can do all these things that they want to do. And on top of that, you are a mom, so you're a mompreneur. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First and foremost. And, you know, it's so funny. Like, my son reminds me, he's seven. But it's, it's funny when you have kids because they tend to, to snap you back into reality. And when he sees the work that I've done on YouTube or he hears me on the radio because I do uh, voiceovers as well, so if he hears me on the radio, he says, Mom, you're famous, or Mom, I want to be like you. And it's just like I have to 
remind myself how important it is to have a positive image because your children do look at what you do. And with that being said, he's the main reason why I decided to go back to school and get my master's. Initially, I wanted to go to law school, but I looked at all my student loans from undergrad. I said, okay, right. Right. public administration doesn't look so bad. It's just two years, uh-huh. and I finished it within a year, and I also did a concentration in international law. I mean, um, sorry, not international law, international relations. And I knew where I wanted to go in the end, and I took – diplomacy courses, you know, anything to help me to become a well-rounded individual so that anywhere I decided to step, I had some kind of background and some knowledge so I won't feel lackadaisical and I could go into the workforce energized and empowered. So the public administration degree, my master's, I feel accomplished because at the end of the day, no one can take that from me. Um, I would never down anyone who's been in the career field for X amount of years because that is a positive thing. These days, it's great to have a degree, but it's even better to have the experience. And the experience accompanied with my degree, it's helped me land the position that I'm currently in. And my passion is what drives me to do all these different things. I love to manage, and I love trying new things. Music is my passion, and Passion is what drives me to where I need to go. I love to cook. I love to watch people eat my food. And (laughs) even though I never went to culinary art school, I still feel Uh I am the best chef out there. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I make pepper sauce and I make green seasoning, and I sell those. And so far, everyone who's bought my pepper sauce or my green seasoning, they, they love the product, and they always come back. I have $5 bottles, $10 bottles, $20 $20 bottles, and I try to make it as inexpensive as possible, you know, because the community I serve, I want everybody to get a piece of the pie and, and look at this product and enjoy it to the best of their ability. Right now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to ship because I have people in England now who are interested in purchasing the product. So, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Um, what people have to understand, too, is, like, you're doing all of this um, you're you're a mom, and are you a single mom, or you know how how do you manage that with all of these things? Because you have a nine to five, and you yeah. have like these different hats. So how are you doing this? Um, most importantly, I would say if I do not have my calendar book, I will be lost. So most of my activities, I tend to do pepper sauce appointment-based. I usually try to take orders at a specific time and have those orders ready so that by the weekend I can get them out to the customers. Um, For the music now with Julian's promo, that is like a 24-hour job Um, because I get requests 4.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, and I just have to smile and take in those requests and process it. So basically with Julian's promos, it's a partnership. Um, I, I assist those who need. If an artist comes in and they need a write-up, I'm a, I make myself available. With the artist and the producer that I'm working with right now, that's a work in progress, so I can't really give too much details at the moment. But um, all in all, I would say passion, as I stated before, helps me. My calendar book is a most important thing, and having my family there. I am a single mom. However, I I never consider myself a single mom in the sense that I have family support. So when I can't do it for myself, I have my mom who will come in and and help take care of my son on days that I have to go out and do a gig or I have to go out and meet a client. My mom is there to help my dad, my brother. I have extended family that's there, and I think having a positive support system is, is, is paramount in this day and age especially. And I think that's what gives me that energy to continue going forward because if they weren't there, I really don't know. I probably might have collapsed by now and probably would have just focused on one one career aspect or one career track, not wanting to try other things. And I'll be honest with you, with the pepper sauce thing, it was more like a hobby. It started out as a hobby. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I covered an empowerment series recently, and I used to say, you know, in order for me to do this pepper sauce thing, I'd have to have some kind of collateral, I'd have to have some kind of startup money in order for Mm -hmm. me to get forward. And I listened to these women on this panel, and they said, 
you, you have to take out the word can't out of your vocabulary, and you also have to take the word money out your vocabulary. Just expect that you'll, you'll have your high, low, high and low periods, and mm-hmm. if you don't have the money now, invest with even $5 and watch that $5 flourish. And a lot of these women said if they waited for that big check to come in, they wouldn't get to where they have to go. And mm-hmm. that empowered me, and, and from since then I said, you know what, I'm going to – do what I have to do to get myself out there. Because at the end of the day, my end goal is that by the time I reach X age, my name must be a household name. And that's been a top priority for me since I was probably 10. I wanted to be a household name. And politics was one way. It, I, I wanted to follow my passion. Politics is my passion, but, you know, that's a different track, and we can get into that another day. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, yeah, for the most part, the media and stuff like that, that is a major thing. And it, I, I wouldn't say it's taken off, but it's where it needs to be, put it that way. And it's not to say that I see the glass half empty or half full. I just, I'm one of those people where I have a drive and I like to keep going. I'm very ambitious and I like to, to keep my wheels going. I don't like to be complacent because once you're complacent, you just get lackadaisical and it's not good for you in the end. I'm sorry for rambling if I'm rambling. (laughs) No, absolutely not. You are not (laughs) rambling. You're giving some jewels. And I'm going to tell you, like, you just said the whole show. (laughs) Like, the whole show is done. It's over. (laughs) But this is is amazing. You know, just to recap, um, a lot of people are like, well, how does she do all of that? I know I'm one of those women. I'm like, um, you know, I, I do a lot, but I'm looking, and you're like superwoman, and it's like you have a clone or two or three, and how are you everywhere, and how are you do, doing all of this, and do you sleep, <laughs> you know? Oh, um, right? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Do you sleep? I do sleep, thank you very much. <laughs> but coffee is my best friend. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, looking from the outside, it's like, well, how does someone do that? Is it possible for someone to do that? But you have things in place, which you've shared already. You know, like you you live by your appointment book, and, you know, you have a calendar. So you're organized. Organization is so important, and a lot of people mm-hmm. take that for granted. They kind of just get up today and say, okay, I'm just going to do this or whatever, and they don't really have, like, the organization and the plan. So, like, that's really important. That's a jewel. And it's something that you live by. And family support, it takes a village. So, you know, of course you don't feel like a single mom if you have, you know, your mom, you have your dad, you have the uncles, aunties, and everybody involved. You're not going to feel that way. But you have to be able to accept help. You have to feel okay to say, I need help, I need support, and then take it. And I think that's what happens. A lot of women don't do that. They're like, no, this is my child, and... I'm not going to ask anyone to help me. I'm just going to try to do it on my own. So it sounds like you're okay with getting that help, using your, your support network to get stuff I done. Mean, you know what? I was raised in a Caribbean background, and we never saw putting the mother into a, a retirement home. So the grandma was always there to take care of us. My grandmother helped raise me while my mom was taking care of her career. And mom would come home during the night and – my granny, as I called her, would take care of us during the day after school. So family, as you say, a village takes, it takes a village to raise a child. Family is, is key in anything in my life. That's just how I am. And I, I base everything around my family, especially when I make any kind of career moves. I, I, I do have a private life. Yes, I do. Certain things mm-hmm. I do keep private, but at the same time, I do try to involve them because at the end of the day when, when, when the chips hit the ground or when the dominoes fall, they're there to support me, and I would never lock them out of anything in my life. Awesome. Family first. We are going to take a break, and we're going to come back. I'm looking forward to talking to you about breaking down um, some tips for how women who have different passions, how they can have a multifaceted career, how they can juggle their passions and their priorities. So please stay with us, folks. Thank you, Chandel. I'm looking forward to, you know, continue talking to you. We'll be right back. No problem. Hello and welcome back to Career Therapy with Seneca Williams. I'm so happy today to have Shandell with us 
talking about having multifaceted careers, juggling your passions and your priorities. Um, Shandy has been telling us all about the things that she's been working on. She's been giving us some great tips as well. She's been doing so much. I can't even go into all the things that she's been doing. She's also a manager of a group of DJs. She's a writer. Um, she creates pepper sauces that she's selling, and she's talking about going international. So, you know, right now I want to know a little bit more about how did you start writing and managing? Is this something that you've always thought of doing? Is it something that you've done in the past? And then maybe we can get into, like, some tips for women who are interested in not only having a 9-to-5, but building on their different passions. Well, I've been writing since I was 8 years old. I probably didn't publish anything until junior high school, and I wouldn't even consider that a, a major publication, but I, I published a few things with a group of students. We did a book of poems. That was the first thing I ever wrote was a book of poems. Then I started doing stories for uh, mock, mock trials. I used to write stories for – because I, was, I went to John Jay High School in, in Brooklyn, and it was known for criminal law. So I used to write scripts for us to reenact for, for moot court. And um, then when I got into college, I continued writing. I wrote for the school newspaper, both in high school, junior high school, and in college. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Writing is my passion, and that's another thing I think in the, I said in the last segment, following your passion. And writing is my therapy. It's my passion. I'm actually in the middle of writing a book. <laughs> I've been taking forever. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's add another. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, you can add that. I've been taking forever to finish this book. Um, I'm at page 113. I'm trying to stop. I'm one of those people where I procrastinate. I, I have that. I used to procrastinate. And this project, it's taking too long. And I think it's because I was trying to juggle everything that I, I would start, and then I would say, okay, I'll get back to it. I'll start. I will get back to it. But um, I decided this year I've created a deadline, and that's important, always having a deadline. So I've decided I'm not going to, to wean this deadline. This deadline is the 29th of December. I'm going to have this book finished once and for all. Um, the book is okay. called Pace. So I'm hoping to have that published. I have a couple of things published, but for the most part, I've done blogging for Caribbean Network, for Island Mix, for Julian's promos, mostly about artists, mostly about stuff within the Caribbean community I used to blog about. I haven't blogged as of recently because I've said before mm -hmm. I've, I've taken like a, a different role where I've been consulting um, artists as they come in with requests for Julian's promos. I've also... Um, done managing. I'm, I'm doing management. I'm, I'm managing Rhythm Cast Music as um, entertainers. They also do producing. So we've produced one track so far. You know, we've just recently got our feet wet. So there's more to come. A few tracks are actually set to release sometime uh, later on in 2018, so look out for those. Um, managing artists right now, and that's a new cup of tea. As I said before, I can't give too much about it because it's still new for me, but it's a passion. Music is my passion, and that's what I'm following. Writing and music, two passions that you just can't go wrong. And I think that that's important when it comes to, to having tips in regards to following your career path. Yeah, th those passion is one of them. Passion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, if this is how it sounds to me. It sounds like – if you do something naturally, like you were writing since you were eight years old, it's something natural to you, you like doing it, that is your passion. Because sometimes mm -hmm. people will say, I don't know what my passion is or I don't know what my purpose is, but it sounds like it's not something that you had to go out and find or look for. It's just what you do. Yeah, precisely right. That's exactly <laughs> Okay. Right. <laughs> and and it's, it's, it's so simple, but you'll see people like, I don't know what my passion is, you know, and I don't know what I like to do. But, but I'll be I think honest it, with you. Yeah. Oh, sorry to cut you. I'll be honest with you. Um, what used to be my setback, including for the book, the setback I used to have, I, I would say it's procrastination, but the real root of the procrastination was fear. I had a fear of failure. I had a fear of financial difficulties. I had a fear of, fa of failure, like I said before. 
And Mm -hmm. those things used to culminate and become what I would consider like a big demon that would just ride my back. Like, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to fail and I don't want to look bad. And then I look at my son. My son has the same problem. He hates to be wrong and he hates to fail. And what I've learned in life, you have to fail in order to, to progress. You have to learn from your mistakes. And I had a friend tell me that once. The best thing in life is mistakes because without them, you'll never learn. And, you know, you have to have a positive support system as well, and you have to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you're just going to be zigzagging on a constant basis, and that, that's important. Know who you are and know what you're about. And I think a wake-up call for me was having friends tell me, you know, you're, you're so talented, yet you're not doing anything with your name. You're not putting your name on something. And I said yeah. to myself, I said, I do. I, 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 I'm helping these people out. That, that, you know, they recognize me in the end, and I'm okay with that. I'm very humble. I could take mm-hmm. being recognized in, like, two lines, to the last two lines. I could take an award. But in the end, these things didn't really have my name on it. It really wasn't me. It, it was me in collaboration with several other people. So mm-hmm. that fear of, of that failure, that fear of and a fair failure is what led me to take 10 steps back. And, and I'm at the point now where I'm just like, if I, I don't push myself forward, I'm just going to always be in the shadows. And I don't want to be in the shadows anymore. So I would say follow your passion and see where it takes you. Okay. So that was really great um, for someone that is wondering, I don't know what my passion is. Um, I don't know how I can pursue all these different things. Your number one thing is passion. And passion is what you usually do, what you're good at, what you like doing, what you enjoy. But you have to know yourself. So that's the second thing you said is know yourself. Like some people I think are struggling because they don't know who they are. You know, they don't know what they're about, what they're interested in. And I know even in my personal life, one of my struggles with figuring out what I wanted to be because I wanted to go to law school forever. (laughs) And I realized I don't really want to go to law school or be a lawyer, I think. I think I was just trying to do that because, you know, I come from a Caribbean background, so you're either a doctor or a lawyer, and then, Mm -hmm. you know, that makes your parents proud. So I was like, yeah, I'll be a lawyer, (laughs) you know. And I was like – yeah, I was like, wait, that's not me, though. I, I, I mean, I love helping people, and I think that's, that's what I had to discover. I had to discover I love helping people. I love the counseling part of law, but I don't want to be a lawyer, and that's how I made the shift into becoming a therapist and a coach. I was like, I get to do the same stuff, but I don't have to deal with, like, the legal stuff because that's not really me. So I had to know myself. So what you're saying is like passion, know yourself, and then the major thing is fear. Fear will block all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will block everything. And, you know, I don't know if it's just because we're women or, you know, if it's an age thing or what it is. Sometimes we're afraid to be the name in front. We're afraid Mm -hmm. to step out, be on stage, you know, get the award. We're afraid of that. And I know for myself, that was something that I had a difficult time with as well, breaking out of that and saying, oh, no, I will come from behind the stage and I'll come up front. That was something that was difficult too. But, you know, once you're there, you're like, I'm here. So, you know, I love that you said, I'm coming out. I want to be known. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to see Shandy's seasoning and Shandy's book. Um, and Shandy's management and, like, you know, you sounded like a, a Oprah in the making. <laughs> so right? I am looking forward to it because I, I love it. You know, you're, you're all over the place. And I know that you have a strong um, interest also in humanities, in social justice and things like that. I know that's something really big for you you know, and and pushing your culture forward. So do you want to talk a little bit about that side of what Shandy does as well? Um, Okay, so I'm really big in giving back to the community. So the most I would say is I try my best to – my background is Vincentian American, and I work – with getting our picnic out there. I can talk a little bit about that aspect. There are other aspects that I have, but I'll I'll dip into that. So we do a lot of community-based activities, um, and we do a lot of awareness within the Caribbean 
mainly, of course, in Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, if there are issues within the Caribbean, such as Dominica, we try to do drives, and I work as the public relations officer for Vinci Day USA. And um, predominantly our focus is the Vinci Day picnic, but, you know, we try to venture out and help within areas of need within our, our diaspora. So that's the most I'll get into. There are other things, like I said, but I, I – I, won't disclose those. You just have to say to Right, you. right. So that is awesome um, that you put in your culture out there. A lot of times people, um, they may migrate, they come to the States, and they don't go into or go back to where they come from. So some people don't know that you are from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They may not be familiar with that. So you're a big part of, you know, representing where you're from, and also the other Caribbean islands as well. You're a big part of putting the culture out there. I just want to correct you here because I know I'm going to have people call. She's not from St. Vincent. I was born in America, but I do have Vincentian citizenship. My parents are from St. Vincent. Thank you very much. Let me correct that right now. I just want to put it out there. I'm, but you know what? I am one of those people where I went to St. Vincent from a young age, and I just fell in love. I, I always identify with that culture. Like I said, I was raised by my grandmother, and my grandmother was from Mesopotamia, or we call it Mespo, and she was a country woman, and she raised me with those country ways. I don't really identify with the American culture, and that's just me, and that's a different topic altogether. But okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, that would help to for people to understand too, like um, you know, making the pepper sauce and being a, a big part of Julian's promos, and you know, representing for the soca artists and managing, you know, DJs, Caribbean DJs. It, it helps them to understand why it's it's such a big thing for you and and why this is your focus. And it's so mm-hmm. necessary that people understand and know where people come from. They understand culture, and you're keeping it alive. So that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome. Um, so the book that you, you have um, that is coming out in 2018, is this also something about culture? Is it, about, uh, is it a novel? What kind of a book is this? It's a fictional book. Um, you know, it's it's based on a young lady growing up in Brooklyn. So <laughs> with it, with Caribbean background, you know, some people might say it's about myself. It's really not about myself. But, you know, there are some bits and pieces where I I took people who I've known growing up and I've I've fictionalized them with these particular characters. So the main character is Sharon DaCosta and she works in entertainment. She has her own entertainment company, and she's a lawyer, actually. So she, she wears multi-hats as well. No, it's not about me, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, I created a character where I can relate to this character. So many, and, and the reason why this book came up is because so many times you read about books that make it, but it's about a, a, a struggling, poor person or, you know, someone who, who meddled in drugs and they made it big that way. And I, I didn't want that. I wanted to have a book about a successful character that, that has a house, that has money, and, you know, just probably has problems with her love life. But, you know, everybody has those issues. Yeah, right? so, yeah. So I, I wanted a character where everybody, could, yeah, everybody could relate to her, put it that way. Just look out for okay. that. Okay, nice. I am looking forward to it, and I love that it has that flavor in it too, the Caribbean flavor. So, Thank you. you know, like I said, you have the culture in everything, and you're pushing it forward, and I'm looking forward to reading that book. So we're going to go into another break, and, you know, we'll be back shortly. Thank you again for being here. This is, like, really great, like, information, and it's exciting, and I'm like, I can't wait to see what you have coming next but we'll have to stay tuned. Thank you. (laughs) Welcome back to Career Therapy with Seneca Williams. Today we have Miss Shandell, Shandy, talking about all the hats that she wears and how you can have multifaceted careers, juggling your passions and your priorities. So we have got like a wealth of information about how she's wearing you know I actually lost count but I think it's like six different hats 
<laughs> you know, uh, we, we left off. She was talking about a book that she's writing. She talks about managing uh, DJs. She's talking about how she's into promoting the culture. So she does a lot of um, volunteering and promotion of the culture. She's also working on her pepper seasoning line that you can, you know, she's going to share some information on how to get that. So she's doing all of this, and she's a mom. You know, she has a son. So she's doing all of this, and it's it's so amazing. And for some people, it can be intimidating, and they can think, oh, my goodness, like, she's Wonder Woman. How did she do all of this? And, you know, she probably just woke up like this. And it's it's not that case. And I like to share with um, the listeners if there is anything that you can share with them, a testimony or a challenge that you've overcome while on your career journey that you can share with them, you know, I went through this, this is how I overcame, and, you know, they can have some inspiration on how they can overcome things they're going through. You know, being a mom and having a nine-to-five and, and, you know, indulging in my passion with these career tracks, it, it, it does take a toll or it did take a toll on me. And, you know, there was a time where I wanted to give up and I said, I can't do this anymore. It's, it's, and that time did come. When it came, I, I was in a room by myself and I was near tears. I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I feel overwhelmed. I feel tired. I feel unaccomplished because I think they say you go through this when you, you reach 25 or 30, you go through a little crisis there, a quarter crisis or something to that effect. I forgot where mm-hmm. I read it. And... I had lost my job. I was in school. I was thinking about, because at the time I was married, I was thinking about getting a divorce. And I had the media thing going on, and the media is what took me away from my tears, for lack of a better term. It kept me motivated, because when I felt like I was failing in my personal life, media is what drove me to continue and say, let's see how far this will go. My education is what also inspired me because I was in school and I was taking tips on, on public administration and, and mastering the skill of management. And I said, you know, if, if I can take these gentlemen from RhythmCast or, or take the gentlemen from Boom Station and make this station thrive or make RhythmCast thrive, then I can do anything I want. The beauty about it is I was able to carry my son with me. So, you know, there were times when I was working my 9 to 5 before I got laid off, and I missed his first steps, and I had my breakdown there because, like, my son is not with me. You know, after you're you're breastfeeding a child, you want to be there for every step of the way, and then reality hits when you have to go back to work. I can't be there. Excuse me. When I got laid off, I had time by myself at home. And you get depressed because you have – you have, you know, funds coming in, but it's not what you were making before. And those steps led me to where I was today. I had my husband who was not big with the whole media thing. And that testimony I have there is that, you know, if I didn't, if I wasn't diligent and, and following my passion and saying, you know, to hell with what you have to say, this is who I am, this is what I love. And if you married me based on love, love means you have to accept me in my entirety. And if you cannot accept the whole package, I don't need you. And I would preach that to him on many occasions to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. And we eventually got divorced, but not just because of media. But I think maybe at times we – after a while, you realize sometimes the person that you fell in love with is not who he or she is, and it takes time for you to realize that. You evolve, for lack of a better term. And if, if they can't evolve with you, then you realize they're, they're not on the same level as you. And I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything, but <clears throat> excuse me, that was a big conscious reality in that where I wanted to go and where he wanted to stay, I couldn't be at that level anymore. And I feel like he should have been more proud of who I was or more accepting of who I wanted to be. I had my son cheering me on, and when I go do interviews at the station, I bring him. This is radio station, boomstation.net. I would bring him with me. If I had an artist interview and it wasn't too late at night, I would bring him, you know, I'll have him sit down. When I was at Uncensored TV, I would bring him around. So I would expose him to these different avenues so he could know, you know, 
mommy is doing something and she's making sure she's making her name for both of us so that when he looks back, I have some kind of legacy that he could say he's proud of. And I also wanted him to be exposed to this kind of, slightly, this kind of lifestyle or this kind of career field, media, so he could see if this is what he wants. My mom growing up, she took me to Mother's Take Your Daughter to Work Day. My mom's a nurse. And she took me to take Mother's Take Your Daughter to Work Day. And I'll never forget, a patient threw up on her, and he threw up coffee blood. And it's really stink, and it's really dark. And I said to her, I said, this is not what I want to do. This is not my career field. Mm-hmm. You know, kudos to you. And, and it's a known fact, and I think you mentioned it before, when you're in the Caribbean, Caribbean background, it's either you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, or you're a nurse. And those are the three top career fields. And I didn't. I wanted to be a lawyer, but as I got older, student loans packed on. And and I said to myself when I spoke to my professors when I I was um, doing my MPA, they said don't be a lawyer because one of my professors was a lawyer, and she said there's too many lawyers out there and not a, enough uh, job openings available. And you're going to be one of those lawyers sitting down saying why didn't I choose something else? So you know MPA is the route for you because you get a little bit of both, and it's more flexible. And that is how I ended up with that career choice or or that degree choice. And I say all this to say, and I've been preaching this, passion is what led me to where I am today. I have so many different stories that I could tell, and I think I told probably like five right there. But the main one that inspired me, and I didn't mention this before, but what inspired me to to also do music was my late uncle, Uncle Walter, as uh, many of us called him. Walter Porter was a Calypsonian within the Vincentian community, and he was famous locally for us. He was murdered in Pan Am 103, and right before he took his flight, he set out certain goals that he wanted to accomplish, and one of them was Patani House. And me stepping into media was to accomplish that dream because Patani House was to help out local artists. When they come to America, they had a place to stay and a studio that they can work in. And that was the main drive for me to also get into media and into music and to helping artists as well because I always kept in the back of my head Patani House is something that he wanted to accomplish. And I said, you know, one day I'll try and get money to open up Patani House to help those in need. I haven't gotten to that part yet, and that goal will probably be 10 years down the line. But what I have started was the media. I have interacted and helped artists. And to have artists come back and say, Shandy, as they call me, Shandy, it, you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Or Shandy, thank you for inspiring me to do this. Shandy, for helping me to do that. It, it, it touches my heart, and it makes me say my work isn't in vain, and, and I am doing something positive to help those in need. So, you know, I mean, in the end, like I said, follow your passion and don't ever let anyone make you feel bad for what you want to do. In the end, you have one life to live and you have your own story to tell. I might do it my way and the next person will do it their way. It's important to know who you are and what you want to do to get to where you have to go in life. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. It was very transparent. And I know there is someone listening that's thinking to themselves, I want to quit. I want to give up. They may not be getting support from their spouse. They may not have the support from the family. But hearing you say that and then also hearing that you push through, you went over, you went around it, and you're still accomplishing things. You're not letting anything or anyone get in your way. I think that is such an inspiration. And I'm sitting there like, oh, man, I'm inspired. And like, wow, that is amazing. Because a lot of people would have given up or mm-hmm. they would have changed course. They would have said, okay, well, you know, this is a problem here. It's a problem there. Let me choose something else or change my mind. Mm-hmm. but you did not give up. So please let our listeners know how they can find you, follow you, get more information, get some pepper sauce, hear more <laughs> about this book. <laughs> well, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook at Shandy underscore sweet or Shandy sweet. It's all the same. Um, you can also email me at Shandy, C-H-A-N-D-Y dot ablaze. A-B-L-A-Z-E at gmail.com. 
You can catch me on boomstation.net, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. on Sundays in January. That's when the talk show Watch Trouble starts back. Shout out to my co-host, Nikki G, The Voice. And um, you can also catch me with Rhythmcast Music on Saturdays, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., also on boomstation.net. And Julian's promos, just look me up, Shandy. You'll see my name all over YouTube. Telephone number's there and everything. So, you know, it was a pleasure. You know, before I leave, I forgot to mention, you know, some tips. I mentioned passion as being one of them, but I also want people to, to be cognizant of time management. That's also very important. And family and always keeping your calendar because, like I said before, without my calendar, I don't know where I would be. I'm very old school, so I have to flip the pages. I cannot go through my phone and rely on my phone for a calendar. That's just me. Thank you so much, Shandell. So that's it right there. This is how you juggle your passions and your priorities, which you do have priorities, and, you know, how to build a multifaceted career. So I am looking forward to seeing more of what's coming. I'm looking forward to following you again. I know when the book comes out, we're going to definitely have to talk again about this book. I'm looking forward to that. And, um, you know, there's a lot more to come. So thank you again for being with us here at Career Therapy with Seneca Williams. I also thank the listeners as well, and I hope that you all come back and join me for the next episode. Thank you so much for having me.